for Status Coup, and I'm with one of the lawyers who is here at Watch outside the Venezuelan embassy, um, where the opposition is currently shining flashlights and uh, causing all kinds of ruckus. And your name, I forgot to ask. I'm Mara Verhaden Hilliard. And I've seen you um, in uh, on you know people sharing your stuff on Twitter. You're here to kind of watch over things that, that are going on. Is that correct? I'm here defending the rights of the peace activists, the American peace activists who are lawfully present inside the building and who have been under siege from a right-wing vigilante mob for the last several days with the uh, facilitation and authorization of both federal and local law enforcement allowing the mob to attack them personally and to attack the building. And how are they doing inside? I saw that there's been difficulties getting food up to them and medications and things like that, but that there's some kind of rope pulley system now. Do they have their needs taken care of inside, those, the protectors that are inside? Well, what's really happening is because the people inside are lawfully present, uh, what the Trump administration and the federal law enforcement uh, and local law enforcement have decided to do is to try and force them to leave on their own. Because obviously if they were not lawfully present, then they could take action to lawfully remove them. But instead, they've taken the extraordinary step of allowing these mobs to form, mobs that have physically assaulted people in front of law enforcement officers who do nothing, mobs that have been smashing on the doors. They were trying to smash into the building tonight, and that's why we're out here again, was to intervene and stop this effort. These guys who are extremely violent, they've been issuing death threats and rape threats uh, constantly to peaceful activists who are here. They get in the building, um, it's going to be extremely dangerous for the people who are present inside. And the other thing that the government is doing is they're trying to embargo them. They've basically allowed them to create an illegal uh, embargo blockade around this building to try and deprive people of food, of medicine. I mean, it's an extraordinary step when you have law enforcement acting in this manner to really facilitate mob violence and to try and uh, force people out by uh, depriving them of food, of medicine, of the things that they need. And obviously, if the law was on their side, they could take legal action. But in the absence of legal process, they are taking completely illegal actions against the people here. And right now, we were, right just now, we were having the flashlight shown in our face again. It seems like there are these kind of almost childish tactics to force you guys out since all they can do is make noise and, and shine their flashlights. But from, I stood on the other side for about an hour and just observed and filmed. And from what I've seen, the side behind the barricades, and let me kind of show everyone, um, you guys have this protected area. There's been no cursing, no yelling, just standing here peacefully. Is that kind of your, uh, the way that you guys want to pre uh, present yourselves as the protectors? Well, the peace activists have, in fact, been peaceful. They've been very disciplined. They've been peaceful even in the face of physical assaults. They haven't responded as they would be within their rights to defend themselves very frequently. Um, as you can see, the, the, while it's childish and pathetic, the light flashing, it's also really emblematic of this constant, constant effort. They're always blaring sirens or flashing lights. What they're really incapable of doing is, uh, is you know, articulating anything more than the fact that um, they behave like thugs, and they have consistently behaved like thugs. And really, this is, you know, we've seen the fake diplomat, uh, who's the representative of the fake ambassador here for the last two days. Uh, he even tried to smash into the pen over here when people were getting food up to the people inside. I mean, it's great diplomacy on his part. So it, it really tells you everything that there is to know about them. Like right now, they're, you know, they're trying to hold lights over your head while you're trying to interview me. You know, someone's holding a, a sign up, and, and they're hitting the sign. Take my shit. No, I'm, I'm so, helping. I'm helping. You know, like you can see this. They're, they're afraid. I mean, they're like this guy is totally afraid to even allow you to talk to me. They're, they're, they're completely, you know, they're, I'd say both thugs and pathetic thugs all at the same time, but they pose a real danger here. And I don't think it can be lost on anyone that law enforcement actually is watching this happen. They just watch this guy, you know, behind you, grab the sign out of someone's hand. They didn't do anything. Now, you know that if 
anyone was to go protest at the French embassy over the gilets jaunes, the yellow vest treatment, if anyone was to go protest at the Israeli embassy, the Saudi embassy, if anyone was to do anything that these guys have done, even for a split second, they would be in jail. But here, it's completely authorized by law enforcement. And that's one of the things that's been curious to me as I watched from afar is that law enforcement is not doing their jobs in my estimation. I mean, I saw that Ariel Gold and Medea Benjamin were assaulted again and that they, the cops said unless everyone is arrested who was involved that no one would be arrested. Is this kind of the consistent action from law enforcement here? Well, when you say they're not doing their job, thats I know what you mean, but the fact is I think they are doing their job. Law enforcement is clearly under orders to allow this to happen. This is not, you know, the normal way that they would quote-unquote enforce the law. So this couldn't be happening unless they were being directed to allow it to happen. That's what we know is going on right now. The State Department, the Trump administration, the Secret Service, they are directing this to happen. Thank you very much for your time, and I'll let you go because the, the light's flashing. It can't be comfortable for you. <laughs> Thank you. I think we've gotten used to it. Thank you.